Hi, I'm Dawn Leanne Gardner. Some of you may know me from Queen Sugar. Join me in this room as I talk about purpose, life, identity, so many things. I grew up in LA, so native Angelino. My dad is from Alabama, from Tuscaloosa, and my mom is from China. And they both found their way uh, to LA through the sort of great movements of history. My dad had the Great Migration um, in the 50s, and my mom also in the 50s, yeah, 50s, from China with her family. And um, in southern LA, met each other in high school, fell in love through chess. <laughs> And over a few years, you know, just dated and, and eventually got married and out came the two of us, my brother and myself. Um, so from the from jump, mm -hmm. it was unconventional. <laughs> it was unconventional. And then we sort of grew up all over LA. Um, it was a mostly centered in South LA. Like my, mo my grandmother's house was at Exposition and Western. Um, it was the rock of the family. It was where you were all the time, basically. And then, you know, we were always about 10 minutes away from each other. All the, my aunts and uncles and my cousins, and it was a very much a village sort of woven through LA and South LA. That's what I remember, and that's what has borne out in my family, is extraordinarily close relationships with my cousins. Um, they're like siblings. And I think a lot of my identity formed in that it was always there, this sort of um, desire to express and to create and to, um, I don't know, just engage, engage with beauty, engage with with things that are that are creative. And it took all kinds of forms. I wanted to be a cartoonist at one point. <laughs> Unconventional. When I was 14, my mom took me to India. The first thing I saw when I got off the plane were kids outside of the airport on the ground and one boy in particular just crawling on the ground and I just my whole world within like a few seconds something in my brain just shifted and I understood so many things in that moment and it, it was it was profound it was like oh you're on the ground I'm not you are um, crawling and begging and I'm not I'm in relationship to you and you are my peer, I can tell, you're my age. So why is this the case? And how do I respond to this? It was such a m moment of like crisis that I felt like, wait, so I'm here, my natural, no one has to tell me this, my natural thing is to do this, that won't help, so I don't know what else to do. I have to sort of be with this incredible discomfort. It really changed my life. And it really changed going back to the industry, going back to sets, you know, going back to, to work as an actor on, on you know, a, a, a show here or there. I just began to really look for, why am I doing this? If, if there's such in the world, why am I doing this? For me, that question of why really does ground me in whatever I'm pursuing in whatever project I'm working on is, is why this, why now? Mm -hmm. And if I can answer that question, I feel like I can give myself mm -hmm. to it. I can, I can contribute to the conversation it's trying to have yeah. in a meaningful way. In fact, when the show started, when Queen Sugar started, I was, um, I really didn't know how to step into the space of, I'm also in the advocacy realm. I'm also, because it felt like, it felt a little trendy. It mm -hmm. felt a little, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. hashtag woke. And I was just <laughs> like, it's a lot. Cause when I was younger, it was a very serious other path for me to pursue. And, um, and nothing about it was a trend. It was absolutely like, does, does this make sense for my life purpose to go in this direction? It took me a few years to reconcile how I could be all those things and how all those things can fit and I can make room for all of them. And I think that's, that's the question is, what do I want, what do I need to make room for all of them? Who are the people, where are the places where I can feel whole? Charlie is unlike any character I've ever played, ever. I think if there's one lesson, one lesson that she's taught me that I will take with me forever, 
it is to include all parts of yourself. The uncomfortable, the shadow side, the side that really isn't trying to make it okay for anyone else, the vulnerable side, the heartbroken side, the champion, the superhero, the kryptonite, like all the things. In playing her, I've had to like, you know, investigate all these parts of myself. That's a heroic journey. Yeah. That's an epic thing to do, to embrace and truly, truly give love to all parts of yourself. Mm -hmm. It's an empowering space to embody. Yeah. Womanhood and wholeness. Mm -hmm. Womanhood as normal. Womanhood as worthy. Womanhood as necessary. Those themes, I think, have resonated the most with me and shifted my, not just my outlook, but what I will tolerate. Mm. Yeah, what I will tolerate around how my womanhood, womanness is being received, interpreted, assigned. I think it's not just coincided, it, it prompted mm -hmm. <laughs> in a lot of ways the moments that we're in right now talking about gender, talking about women, talking about equality. And I mean, it, it was Ava's choice and intention to create, you know, four seasons now of all women directors. As an actor, it continues to shift my normal of what a director is. It's a profound, it's a profound shift. Mm -hmm and hearing others identify as Charlie or, <laughs> you know, hearing, I feel so blessed and so privileged to be playing her, to be part of the show doing that because they're saying, to me they're saying, I identify as a hero in my own life. I identify that way. I'm not identifying as a female hero, in my, as just a hero, as I am and that, it's deeply humbling and empowering and beautiful yeah. to be part of that. I think we began the show with an intention to honor the experiences of the folks in our lives and in our communities to tell, to tell truths about what we know to be true and to do it in as dimensional a way as possible. And I think what we wanted then was for folks in our own lives to feel seen and heard and known and worthy. It was literally like, we're going to do, we're going to craft a jewel that is so beautiful and all it's gonna do is just reflect you back to you. And other people get to see too. They get to see it. They get to enjoy the jewel too, but it's for you and you get to really see yourself. You know, I lost a friend a few years ago and it threw me into profound question about why am I choosing to be here then? Because you can choose to not be. And it took me like months to a year to really answer it. And the question that, the, the answer that kept coming pretty immediately, but it was, it needed to be fleshed out, but the answer that kept coming was, it's not just about healing, but about freedom. What does true freedom look like? What is a world where folks really are free? Mm -hmm. And how does what I'm involved in contribute to that? Yeah. As someone who has been in a conversation with myself about the experience of being othered my entire life. I look in the mirror and immediately I have to make sense of what I'm seeing. And it's my entire life this has been the case. It has been the doorway to my greatest sense of self. And I could not have predicted that. I could not see that when I was younger but it, it has been the facilitator 
of my coming into fuller expression of who I am. That discomfort, the asking into, the journey to embracing, the fight sometimes. It is a, it's a process of self-inclusion that lately I've begin, begun to identify. But it's that process that is so critical first. If this healing isn't happening, there's gonna be dysfunction. It always begins for me with a journey with self. The experience of being othered may be your greatest gift to yourself.